The method of virtual work. In previous lectures, the work energy principle was used to relate external work to internal energy in a structure. See lectures SA19 and SA20. For example, for a simply supported beam subjected to a concentrated load, the work energy equation can be written as 1 half P times delta equals to 1 half times the integral of M times D theta. The left side of the equation represents external work done by the load. The right side of the equation represents the resulting internal energy stored in the beam. On the left side, P is the applied load and delta is displacement under the load. On the right side, M is bending moment in the beam and theta is slope of the elastic curve, both due to the beam's deformation. We can use this equation to calculate delta, the displacement under the load, as was demonstrated in lecture SA20. The work energy principle can also be used for trusses. For example, in the case of a simple truss like this, we can write 1 half P times delta equals the sum of Fi delta I over 2. Again, here the left side of the equation represents external work and the right side represents internal energy. On the left side, P is the applied load and delta is the horizontal displacement under the load. Fi is the axial force in member I and delta I is the elongation of the member. So, if we were interested in calculating the horizontal displacement at C, we could write delta equals to the sum of Fi delta I over P. Since the truss is statically determinant, we can easily calculate member forces and elongations as was demonstrated in lecture SA19. But what if we needed to calculate vertical displacement at B? Since delta B does not appear in the work energy equation, we cannot solve for it using the work energy principle. We need to use a more general method, like the virtual work method, to accomplish this. The method of virtual work is based on the work energy principle, but can be used to calculate displacement at any arbitrary point in the structure. Let's start by examining the basis of the method. Suppose we have a structure subjected to a set of external loads. Consequently, the structure is going to displace like this. Let's refer to the horizontal displacement under P as delta H and call the vertical displacement under load Q delta V. Now suppose we add an imaginary vertical load to point B. Since this load, here denoted by P star, is imaginary, we'll call it a virtual load. The structure can be easily analyzed under P star in order to determine the virtual member forces. Let's refer to these forces as F star 1, F star 2, and so on. Since there are five members in the truss, there are five virtual member forces. Note that P star is applied in the direction of delta V. Since this imaginary load travels through the real displacement, it does imaginary or virtual work. The work done equals P star times delta V. We call this an external virtual work since it is done by an external virtual load. Since the real loads P and Q cause real member deformations, then it is also true that the virtual load causes internal virtual work. For member 1, internal virtual work equals F star 1 times delta 1 where F star 1 is the virtual member force due to P star, and delta 1 is the real elongation of the member due to P and Q. Similarly, for member 2, internal virtual work can be written as F star 2 times delta 2. So in this case, the total internal virtual work equals... The principle of virtual work states that external virtual work equals to the internal virtual work, or Now, since P star is imaginary, we can give it any value we wish. To simplify our calculations, let's make it a unit load. So we get delta V equals the sum of F star I times delta I. 
Here, delta I is the real elongation in member I due to real loads, and F star I is the internal force in the member due to a unit virtual load. Using the equation, we can easily calculate delta V, the vertical deflection at B, due to the real loads. In fact, using this method, we can calculate displacement at any truss joint. For example, to calculate horizontal displacement at D, we place a horizontal unit virtual load at D, and we calculate member forces due to the load. Then, horizontal displacement at D equals to the sum of F star I times delta I, where F star I is the virtual force in member I due to the unit virtual load at D, and delta I is the elongation of the member due to the real loads. Let's work through an example to better illustrate the method. Consider the following truss structure. The members are made of structural steel with a modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascal. All the members have the same cross-sectional area, 20 squared centimeters. The truss is subjected to two concentrated loads as shown. We wish to determine horizontal displacement at C, vertical displacement at B, and horizontal displacement at D. We can start by calculating member forces in the structure. This can be done easily since the truss is statically determinate. The support reactions are AX equals 500 newtons, AY equals negative 250 newtons, and DY equals 450 newtons. The member forces are F1 equals 307 newtons, F2 equals 321 newtons, F3 equals 200 newtons, F4 equals 321 newtons, F5 equals negative 553 newtons. Now, let's determine the axial elongation of each member due to the real loads. According to Hooke's law, axial stress equals to modulus of elasticity of the material times axial strain, where axial stress equals axial force divided by the cross-sectional area of the member, and axial strain equals to the member elongation divided by its length. Therefore, we can determine axial elongation of each member using equation FL over EA. For member 1, axial elongation can be written as delta 1 equals F1 L1 over EA. We calculated F1 to be 307 newtons. L1, length of member 1, is 8.6 meters. E, modulus of elasticity of steel, is 200 times 10 to the power 9 newtons per squared meters. And the member's cross-sectional area is 20 times 10 to the power negative 4 squared meters. So we get 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power negative 6 meter for delta 1. We calculate the elongation of each of the remaining members in the same manner. Delta 2 equals 4 times 10 to the negative 6 meter. Delta 3 equals 3.5 times 10 to the power negative 6 meter. Delta 4 equals delta 2, which we calculated to be 4 times 10 to the negative 6 meter. And delta 5 equals negative 12 times 10 to the negative 6 meter. The negative sign indicates that the member actually shortens. It is in compression. Now that we have determined the elongation for each member due to the real loads, we can start calculating the desired displacements using the method of virtual work. To determine horizontal displacement at point C, place a virtual unit load in the direction of the displacement at C. Now determine the member forces due to this load. A simple truss analysis gives us the following virtual member forces. A negative force value indicates the member is in compression. The external virtual work for this truss is 1 times delta. The internal virtual work equals to the sum of F star I times delta I. This gives us 
so we can write external virtual work equals to internal virtual work, or 1 times delta equals 20 times 10 to the power negative 6. Therefore, horizontal displacement at B equals 0.02 millimeter. To determine vertical displacement at B, place a unit virtual load in the vertical direction at B and determine the resulting member forces. So the internal virtual work equals 9.67 times 10 to the power negative 6. The virtual work equation then becomes 1 times delta equals 9.67 times 10 to negative 6, where delta is the vertical displacement at B. So, delta equals 0.00967 millimeter. Finally, to determine horizontal displacement at D, place a virtual unit load at D in the horizontal direction. The analysis of this truss gives us the following member forces. Therefore, the expression for internal virtual work can be written as, then the horizontal displacement at D equals 0.008 millimeter. We are going to examine the use of the virtual work method for calculating beam displacements in the next lecture.